is the fourth class of the Winter Rivers and Trees and I did some of the first layers on my trees out of class so that I would have that ready and I'll put that uh, in the video kind of in the beginning here and then um, I'm going to be doing some layers on the trees and some of this and more in the snow and the river today so then everybody can decide if they want to adjust or add or whatever to okay. theirs and then before we do that um, I was sent a paint um, from Daniel Smith that is the uh, Thalo Blue Turquoise, and I believe it's a new pigment. I couldn't find any information on it yet. Um, the pigment itself is PB16, and um, 
So I wanted to just do a quick example of what it looks like and then show it compared to a couple of my other pigments. So this is... Oh, yeah. It, om it does, and it almost has... Um, let me thin it out a little bit. It almost has a peacock feel to it. Mm -hmm. So peacock from Holbein is... I wanted to see what its pigment list is. Peacock is uh, PG7 and PB15. So it's a different... It's different, yeah. yeah. And here is uh, Peacock. So this may be staining. I don't know. This is Peacock. Oh, so Peacock wow. is oh, okay. just slightly different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. yes. This has got a little more blue yeah. in it. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is Thalo. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is this is a little greener. And then ultramarine turquoise, which is the other one that would be somewhere around these, is going to be the greenest. Mm. And oh, ultramarine yeah. turquoise is a Daniel All These ultramarine. three are um, Daniel oh. Smith, and this one is my whole I love that but one. I love ultramarine oh, turquoise. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. Nice. That's, my, that's the cool green I have on my palette. I don't have other cool greens because I can make them. So, oh, that's um, beautiful. Yeah, I really like this one. And I've used that in several paintings for different things, but um, I like the I like the look of that. I do too. Um, yeah. And I'll have to see if, if a chart comes out with more information about it. But for right now, I would say it's probably semi-transparent because I think Thalo is semi-trans. No, it's transparent, so it might be semi to um, transparent. It is a single pigment. Um, and it looks like it's somewhat granular. granular. Mm -hmm. no, the same? Yeah, so we'll just Very have to. Pretty. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So if anybody wants a little squeeze of it to um, play with, I have it up here and, and I can bring some around. Awesome. All right. And then this over here. Okay. Um, all right, so I need to get out my colors and I have uh, I think I have this where it can be seen with the um, on the screen and then I have uh, still more to do in my trees so I'm pulling out the parole scarlet which is my warm red and I used that up in the sky and then I'm using uh, indigo with the pearl scarlet for the trees and I'm going to show you one tree from the very beginning again and I did this sort of in the first class but I want to just do one more and then I'll show you a layer that I would do um, because some of my trees um, need some layering and when those that are in the class I'll, I'll pass this around a little bit and you can see how I layered on this mm -hmm. one it's a little hard to see on the screen mm -hmm. probably um, okay so you could literally push this and just go dark in the very beginning but uh, indigo, uh, unless you put it on really heavily, tends to go on kind of dark and then look a lot lighter than what you put it on as. So um, I, and because I, I tend to build my color, I usually will do it in layers. So um, I'll just do tree right quick. And my brush has not got as fine a point. All right, and so as I am coming down, I will go back into the um, the warm red, and every now and then I'm using that warm red on the side that well I've I've kind of used it more on the side facing the sun, but I'm sort of using it on the edges, depending on the tree and where I want to place it. So. And these trees, because of the colors I, I chose to use, do look more neutral. Um, they look um, kind of black-brown or dark gray-brown because of the color mix. But, um, you know, you might decide to use some other mix and then it wouldn't necessarily have the same color scheme. All right. And I'll just bring it down. Now, I could go right over where my trunk um, is with with pigment, but um, I want to 
uh, just remind myself that, oh yeah, I want a trunk in this area, and it just helps as a reminder. But you could literally just paint down the tree. And I'm using just little strokes and um, trying to vary the marks, which is really hard to do because we tend to be very um, same, same. Especially with... when you do that many trees. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and so it can help, even though you don't necessarily need to follow your drawing exactly, but it can help to have the drawing pretty um, defined because then it will remind you, oh yeah, there's more branches on this side, fewer over here, or this is a bigger branch, these are smaller. Um, so you could just draw the trunk in and then just make marks, but then it's possible to maybe even make it too similar again. Mm -hmm compared to what you might with a drawing there. So, Plus, I just like all the information. <laughs> all right. So I've got that tree in. I would let that dry. If I were going to do um, a trunk, I'll put a trunk on this one. And I mentioned this in the last class that basically, uh, well, I need my, I need more pigment now because I want to go dark. So I'm going to use a damp brush and pull out kind of sticky pigment, not real wet pigment. And same with the indigo, because I want to be able to put in a dark um, trunk, and that's going to allow you to get dark enough. And then I'm going to just skip places in, and try to make them not too um, even, the um, shapes of the, the trunk that you put in so that they're not like you've done a little sewing down your tree. <laughs> okay, and you can vary it, the color in there as well, so it could be a little warmer in places or a little um, darker in other places. So for a tree that um, I've already done, this one over here is too pale, and um, so I'm just going to come back into it and sort of follow what's there, but I don't have to completely cover all of the marks I made, and that will give it another layer. Mm -hmm. And so I'm using kind of the same mixes in the places I put them before, but you, even if you weren't, you could vary it and have some warm color over the cooler color, or vice versa. All right, and that just adds depth and gives you the feeling that there's maybe some branches that are farther back. And then I want to go back um, to a little bit of the warm. So usually I will um, just go back and forth between my colors, but every now and then, um, without washing my brush, and then every now and then I'll go clean my brush off because I want specifically to have it be a little warmer, or um, and it's you want to make sure your brush is clean at that point some, for some of those, because otherwise it'll be more brown looking than on the redder side. Okay, so just doing that, now that tree is standing out more. Mm -hmm. And so I would keep doing that and building the tree. So I've already added layers over here. I may decide that this still needs, um, in some of the more shadowed areas, I may decide that I want to still put in just a little more. And um, by layering the line, so if my line is going this way the first time where the branches are, I might vary the line and bring a branch over it so that it has some depth that way. So I would just look at that, decide if you need to. If you already have your trees in as a dark silhouette, um, they may not need anything other than you might could go back and use a little clear water and lift some places in a couple areas so that it has a little bit of depth. And for those, you might lift more on the edges than like in the middle because of where the light is hitting. So you'll just have to kind of look at it. Um, and then down here, I did add a little bit of color right in here because the background trees here kind of got lost. They're still not really defined. Um, if I wanted to kind of bring them out a little more, I can use, I'm using the same colors, but lots of water in that mix so that it's not very dark. And I'm just going to dry the back of my brush. And then I can come in with my brush and just with a little bit of um, defining marks, I can make 
parts of those trees uh, start to be sort of in focus. And then as it comes down, I can just use my brush to kind of um, blur that into the bottom area. So if you feel like that upper edge is not quite, um, if you want a little more definition from it, because in the photo there is some definition. It's sort of blurry, but um, yeah, you just bring in, just make sure your color is not too dark. That got just a touch dark there. So I'm going to use some water and lift, and I can also dab it. There we go. So just bringing in a little more color in there helps give the idea that those are trees back there. So I, I probably will go back and on a few of these do that across there. Okay. Um, so here, these guys, so this would be... Um, I would actually, if I were doing this for me in a process that I was building, I would probably have put in some of the snow more than these guys first, but I wanted to make sure you guys saw that last time, because although this can really help, putting in a dark sometimes, even if you're trying to build it from light to dark, but having that dark there can give you an idea if you are making your other values um, work. So sometimes having that dark in there, as long as you're not having to go back um, and paint, like if I had put my trees in first and then was trying to paint the background around it, oh, that can nice. cause an issue. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Yeah, you want to build it. So um, here, actually what I would do is put the snow in and then go do those smaller oh, trees. Okay. But, um, because I want, I'll go ahead and do some snow and then I'll show you um, what I would do on some of the trees after I dry it. Lorraine, yes. may I just ask, did you uh, mask some of those limbs to, to where the whites, because it looks like you have snow. It's like there's snow on these. It's really so pretty. On here. Uh -huh. um, no, it's just where um, I made my marks and there's some openings in between. Uh -huh. so it's really pretty. It didn't, it didn't catch me the yellow or the gray and so that's why it looks very white like, okay mm -hmm. yeah okay. it's really pretty yeah so if that, i yeah. tip it up i don't know if you can tell but oh okay um, yes it's just that yeah, yeah. opening that okay. is and yeah. partly because of the screen maybe yeah, it's yeah. looking that okay. way mm -hmm. so um but yeah having having some of those openings in there can sort of gives you that idea yeah. that they are because these are a little more solid uh -huh. over here yeah um and over here i sort of just took and made marks like there's some trunks back there but yeah. I need to make these darker and then just random kind of tree off the edge for that mm -hmm. side okay. um, and then I wanted to just make sure okay so I used uh, ultramarine and scarlet for um, parole scarlet for my snow and the reason that I went with scarlet instead of a bluer red um, is because I didn't want my purple too vibrant and you could even add, which I have been considering doing, adding a touch of the indigo in that mix mm. so that it neutralizes it even a little more. And it will then also relate to the um, other parts of your painting. So I have ultramarine out. And I think I'm going to switch to... This is my um, number 16 brush. Just because I can, I, it has a small point, but it will hold more for me to do the snow and then I'm going to bring not very much of my parole um, scarlet over into this mix and my mix without adding water is too dark and I think mm -hmm. I want just a touch more of the red in it and then I'm going to add some water so now it should be that's better okay and then um, I think I'm going to forego the indigo and I'm going to get out some of my cerulean. Just a little bit. Because some of the edges of this snow I'm seeing just a touch of, of some bluer mix in there. And the reason we see blue or purples in the snow is because it's reflecting the sky. So in this sense, this sky is mostly in, you know, it's going to grays and purples, but maybe other parts of the sky still have some blue to it. So it's hard to say for sure. Um, okay, so I could do this, um, I could paint water over the whole section, but some parts of the snow have hard and soft edges. 
And so I think what I'm going to do is just kind of randomly pick some areas to put some water. Um, and that way I will end up with both hard and soft. And most of this snow has um, color on it. So I'm going to just pick the areas and leave some openings here and there that will be where light is hitting it. And I forgot, I did not put any yellow from the sky in here. Actually, that would be in shadow two. And I'm going to go back into the cerulean here and there so that it's a little bluer in places. And let's see if I'll catch my water before it dries. Okay. And then this edge down here at the water line is more purple and darker. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Okay, and then back a little touch. So I'm not cleaning my brush, but I am just going back over and getting some of the cerulean. And there's a highlight like right up in there on the snow. And I can go right over where the tree trunks are in this area because they're going to be darker. Okay. And all of the water I put in there is dry. I think it's the back of this paper. It's just not exactly the same. It dries faster. I'm just going to use that as the excuse. So <laughs> that's just the way it is. All right. And then um, just a touch of water where these edges have dried. Um, while it's still damp, I can basically force it to have softer edges here and there. You could do that once it's dry, but um, I wanted to just do it since I was thinking about it. Okay, and then coming down this way, a little bit of cerulean in here. And then it's more cerulean sort of back in this area. If you go with a little bluer part to the snow, those like back here, this will recede a little bit. And then if it's a little warmer with the purple color, that will come forward. So I would just vary um, the colors you have going on. Okay, and so then this bunch of snow here, when I put it on the other day, I did use some water. It is um, paler than I want it, so I'm going to go back into my purple mix with a little bit of the cerulean, and um, I think since it dried so quick before, I'm not even going to bother putting the water on the paper beforehand, and I'll just go back and adjust edges here and there once I've got some color on. So I'm just using the mark to follow the snow, so I, I am putting in some of that, um, it's kind of like the wind has blown it, um, look to the snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if it's, like we I mentioned the other day, if it's from thawing and freezing or if it's wind or combination or what, but it is interesting texture. Okay, so get that in there and then I need to dry it. So I'm just, I'm not gonna do this side right now, I'll just focus over here. Let me dry it right quick. Are you going to go back and put a little bit of yellow in the highlights? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, since I forgot it. So I have that first color down. Usually I would put the yellow um, down there first, let it dry, and then come back and put the other color over it. Because generally with yellows, if you put it over another color, um, it's going to be more muted. It's not going to be vibrant. Not that I necessarily need it to be vibrant, but um, all right. So. I was using Hansa yellow and then New Gamboge up here, but I'm going to go with the Hansa yellow because it is a little cooler feeling yellow in the snow. It's not quite as um, warm as you might see, at least over in some of those areas. Maybe up in here, there's a little bit of peach. So um, I am going to actually just place some water in there and then, because I don't want this to be really really vibrant. I just want a little touch of yellow here and there. And so one, having your mix be thinned and then also having that water on there will keep it from being too dark. Um, and then over here, if I was wanting that yellow, so I'll show you that and then I can do the other parts on the other side. So I would put the water on and 
if I can get to it quickly before it dries. Okay, so I'm going to just take a little dark, a little touch of the Hansa, and um, so I'm not trying to fill in everywhere. Mm -hmm. I just want to skip a here and there, and then I'm going to go over to my Parole Scarlet for an area right up in here that feels a little warmer. Maybe a touch right in there. Okay, and then I'll leave that. The um, shadows in the snow, I'm just going to use my dark, um, or not my dark, my purple that I was mixing before. So I'm using the Parole uh, Scarlet with the Ultramarine Blue, and yeah, that's dry. And then I will just come down and put the shadow on hard edged, and then you can come back and if you feel like there's an edge that's a little softer, or if you want to lift some part of it, um, you can just come in and um, by blurring an edge here and there, it connects it to that shape a little better rather than being um, hard edged everywhere. So, um, and then you just have to be careful that if you do soften an edge, if it's really wet, that it doesn't just keep moving and cause um, a new hard edge that's dark. And then I probably would still, on my snow, like, up here in the front, I actually see a little bounce back of some peach, too. I am placing water this time because I don't want this to be very dark. Um, so I'm going to use the same mix, maybe a touch of my cerulean, and just on that lower edge, placing some of that color and then a little bit of that warm. I can see just a touch of the warm in there as well. That will need to dry and then um, I can do some in the water. So before I do the water, let me see, I'll show you guys just a little bit. Um, maybe I'll do these two right here because they're in an area that is easy to get to. All right, so I have the indigo and I'm going back to my mix for that. And for these um, kind of undergrowth trees that are small and you can't always tell what everything is, it's more just um, little random shapes. It's really like painting the trees in. Um, I am going for this though where I can just keep going up and finding the tops because I'm not um, I'm fine if they kind of group together and become just sort of a big mass. And then I want to vary the color here and there. And let's see, you come down to right in here. And then there's some more behind this one. Okay. And there is one right up in here. So it, it's just kind of little random marks that, again, kind of give you the idea that they're trees or foliage of some kind there. Um, there is a uh, trunk of something. I don't know where it goes to, so it may have broken off at some point. It's coming out of the snow sort of right in there. And remember, too, that if you don't like a shape, leave it out. It doesn't all have to be in there. As long as it's um, working for your piece, then leave it. But otherwise, you can take things out or move them. All right, and then there actually uh, it are fewer marks on the photo than what I just did, because um, I left a big white patch, so <laughs> I wanted to fill it in. But uh, yeah, you could, you could leave it. <coughs> Winter. Okay, and then just sort of grassy feeling here and there. Okay, and so now that starts to fill in. The um, snow under that area will need to go darker because wherever there's, um, not wherever, but for this instance, under those trees, there is shadow. And I would wait until that's dry to do this. <laughs> just have to know it could bleed or move and then that's probably not even dark enough actually. We tend to when we're painting 
Um, most of us tend to paint mid-tones. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. if you're looking at your image and it's just like, something's just not working, I can't figure out what it is, it may be that you need to push the values. Whether you need to lighten an area or put more dark in, it's because we tend to um, go in that mid-tone range and we don't push them enough one way or the other. Okay, so that shadow right there is um, something um, really nice to have. This is almost dry, so I think I can put shadow under here. I'm drying that back edge because I'm trying to um, keep my brush from having too much moisture on it down here because I wet the snow up here earlier and I don't know how um, moist it is. And there's a little bit of texture in that snow so you could do like I did where you just skip right. some places and break it up or you might want to um, put it in and then go back and lift some lights here and there so you could do that as well. Make that a little too dark. Okay. Um, Alright so let me dry this and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the water for a next layer because I need to put a little more color in here. It's it's almost there, but it's not quite. So I need to, oh, actually, before I do that, I want to soften an edge. So I'm just using my brush to um, kind of pull some of those edges out so it's not too hard edged everywhere there. All right. The uh, water is going to get another layer, and I am using water on the water. The um, colors that I used before was parole, were Parole Scarlet and the uh, Hansa Yellow Light. And I'm going to actually just push some more water on here because this is drying so fast. And I don't want to make this so strong that it's going to be too intense, but my sky is probably a little stronger, yeah it is, than what the photo is. So I sort of want to match what's happening in my sky. So I would go with, at some point, you have to ignore the photo and do what's working for your painting. So I have Pearl Scarlet out. I'm going to get some more of the hands up. And then I see maybe a touch more back in here. And I will leave a little bit of that earlier color peeking through in a couple places. It depends on how much it moves, whether or not it's there in the end. And then a little more. So did you wet that completely or just tickle deep? Yeah, I wet, I wet the, the whole full thing, thing for this okay. one, yes. And um, I'm going to kind of increase the yellow somewhat over here. Okay, I like that better. And then um, where the shadows of the snow are. Um, right now mine are, I think I used, I want to say I think I used the indigo um, to do that shadow where I think it needs to be more the ultramarine and um, my pearl scarlet mix because I want it a little more on the purple side and that first layer won't hurt anything um, it's just going to add a little more texture and I don't want to do this too soon because if it is really wet it's yeah. going to move fast mm -hmm. so I'm going to try and and you can dry the back of your brush if you're feeling like ooh, you just don't want to do this while it's damp, then I would just dry it and you can come back and do this um, once it's dry. And then your edges will be a little harder, but you can soften a few of those edges. So I'm just doing near the snow right now. There is actually some of that same color in here, but if I put that in there, it's, it's probably going to move too much. So I'm just going to go right under this edge. I, I like the peach right there. I think I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave a little more color in here than what's actually on the photo because I like some of the color that's happening. 
And right there, that's pretty dark. Okay, so I need to dry that. Oh, right here. And actually, there's some... Um, I'm seeing a little orange down in this area. Okay, and a little more. For that, I didn't even brush it on. I just dotted it. Um, it is moving, so if you dry your brush, you know how I showed you the mop brush and how you can come back? Mm -hmm. If you dry your brush, or have a dry brush, this my brush is not dry, you can use just a brush that's got a little bit of moist, or not moisture, um, softness to it. So it doesn't have to be a mop. And sometimes just coming back and picking up a little bit of that color that's wanting to move um, out of its position, you can um, go ahead and lift with a brush. You wouldn't want to use a flat brush because usually what that's going to do is pull too much. Um, but this way it's not bad. Okay, so let me dry this and then I will... Um, hmm. Actually, I think what I will do is I'm going to let this sit and then we'll come back in a little while and I can show you the reflections on that and I'll kind of walk around and talk to everybody, see what you need for your specific piece and then um, I'll do this, the reflection in the water. Does that sound okay? Okay. Uh, before I do just a little more on this one, I'm going to put um, some of the reflections in the water and um, maybe get a little more going on in the snow. Um, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I just wanted to uh, talk about this image. So this one is what I am um, thinking I am going to do for my next painting. And everybody is welcome to do whichever they want because in general, the techniques that we've used either for this one yeah. or some of the movement of the water um, and then those kinds of things will be very similar, whichever image you choose. Um, some of the background trees back in here sort of merge together. So that one image um, that we just passed mm -hmm. around um, gives you kind of an idea of what you can do um, technique wise and I'll show you a little bit of that when I do this one because it's about um, basically massing shapes and then doing some light and dark areas to make it look mm -hmm. like there's overlapping foliage. Mm -hmm. So um, I will have some of that back here and then the water will probably not be as detailed as this image is just because I want to get it in and I'm we only have two classes left so I just want to oh. I may not even do a, a quarter sheet we'll have to see on that. I haven't decided there's this big, yeah, dying. I haven't decided what I want to do with it. I may um, take it so that it's got more water coming down in through here so that it comes off the front of the page and mm -hmm. maybe I'll leave this. Um, maybe I'll have, there's a rock right here. I may have part of the rock peek out yeah. so that there's um, some so. dark. And what you can do, whether you do it on your photo or in some photo software or you can make a print on... Um, another piece of paper that you can draw on so I don't have a pen. Yes, I do. Let's see if this will draw on here. So um, imagine this as water. And maybe take out about that much. Put a rock in there. And there is um, Joseph Zabukovic um, is an artist from he's from Australia. He's originally from Bulgaria or something like that. Um, and he's very well known and he was actually in one of the videos he had through Color in Your Life. Wow. Um, he was showing how he'll take his photograph and he, uh, I think he was using acrylic to paint on it, but he had a 4x6 or a 5x7 photo and he was just taking pigment and painting right on the photo to give himself like, oh I want to adjust here, I want to take that out, put a color in here. and. Um, so if you don't want to take the time or you don't have the knowledge or the software to do it on a photo software, this is a quick way. So if you have acrylic, you know, you could play with your photo um, this way. So if I put maybe this um, rock kind of peeking through sort of right in here, that gives me a dark shape. Mm -hmm. And then if this is darker here, I think that's going to make more sense. Um, if compositionally to have it work. And I might even, because there's flowing water right here, I may want just a little bit of some flowing water right in this area. So I'll have to um, redraw that part of it. Um, but that'll, yeah, that'll help. 
would that rock that you're going to put in there, would that have snow on it too, since the rest of them do? Um, over in here? Well, this yeah. is what I'm imagining, because this is the rock right okay. here. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, this so this part of the rock, and I might even make more of the rock peek out, mm -hmm. um, but um, the part mm -hmm. of the front of the rock then helps separate this snow from mm -hmm. here, because right now it's this big, yeah. you know, like nondescript, what is it? The yeah. other thing is, um, when you're taking photographs of snow, um, our cameras tend to get blown out. The light white of the snow tends to get blown out, so we don't mm -hmm. see all the details that are in the snow, unless you adjust your camera to, to compensate and um, get more, basically darken the snow a little bit so that you're seeing more detail. And what that does actually then is it darkens everything else. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to actually, if you're going out to take snow scene pictures, is take it for the snow so you darken, make your scene a little darker, and then maybe lighten it so that you can see what's in the shadow. Mm -hmm. So a couple, two or three pictures is going to be better usually than one. Oh, and we're not taking them as a photographer might and sit there and fix all the settings and all of that, but a lot of photographers will take one and maybe three images and then merge it together to make it what they want. So. Mm -hmm. Um, anywhere that is just kind of flat white, I may put a little yeah. more color in a, yeah. in a little bit of the snow. So I'm not necessarily going to leave my snow white, white everywhere. So some of it will have light. And this image does not have um, bright sunlight on it. It's more of an overcast um, time of the day. You could even almost put another rock here. Mm -hmm. With the snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right down, down in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you going to draw the branches the way they are? I kind of like them across mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Normally I might go, ooh, I don't, I don't think I want that in there, but um, because it's at the top edge yeah, and like nice thing. Thing. parallels yeah. this yeah. so mm -hmm. nicely. The one know. thing I would probably adjust yeah. is there is a branch that's go basically <laughs> going corner. out the corner, and that is a no-no. No. You do not yeah, want lines going right the off the corner. Yeah. Um, especially triangles and things like that because it can pull the viewer's eye out. Um, so I would either take that out or maybe move it down so it's going off over in here yeah. rather than right there at the corner. Um, yeah, okay. Is there anything in that picture that you would mask before starting? Yes, I will be masking the snow. So all of these little bits. So where here um, we could leave this big snow because majority of the things it's just a big mass and this one doesn't actually have a whole lot of white white. Um, we did mask for the snow that's falling but for here um, any snow that's definitely got dark around it or that's down in the river I will be masking that. I may just mask the edge of this shape um, or I may just take some tape and mask um, off some of those bigger shapes mm -hmm. because then I don't have to think about, especially back in here where the snow is, um, mm -hmm. that actually, because it's so overlapped by little branches, those areas um, I may, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see it. Let me put that. Let's see if I can hold it still no, enough. That's better. <laughs> so where the, yeah, Right in, let me see if I can pull it. Right in here and here, yeah. mm -hmm. those areas, um, there's all those little branches in there. So I probably wouldn't mask that, but I would um, make sure that I paint around mm -hmm. that snow. And then later I can come back and put some of those branches in through there mm -hmm. to make it um, go over the top of the white of the snow. You you could do it a different way. You could just mask anything that you see that's white and ignore the branches that are on top of it. Um, but I feel like I can paint around that and hopefully I can do it and not ignore it. Um, so I will probably, I might do it like 8 by 10 size so that it's not too big um, to demo. And I, um, like I said, I may not put as much as, that's going on in the water just because I want to be able to do it fast enough so you guys can see. When you mask the water that is... Down here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, probably not. The only place I might mask in the water down here is just a few areas that are really highlighted. Mm -hmm. So there's some, because this is fuzzy water, um, yeah. I want a few places that are very white that I'll just keep and that'll just, I can always go back and soften those edges if I need to. Mm -hmm. um, 
but yeah I'll probably be painting this wet and wet and then I'll just let that um, be blurry as I go to paint it in so yeah it probably will not get masked except for a few marks <coughs> okay. so Lorraine do you ever use gouache I do, not. Do not. I do not. I do not. The only time recently that I used gouache was for a painting that I had poured, and I'll go grab it right quick. Um, the reason I don't use gouache is because one, I like the transparent color. I know. Um, I like it to glow, and then also um, the shows that I enter, yeah, a lot of them I'm say, you know, it's yeah. transparent. Although um, there are a lot of shows, watercolor shows, that say it's a multimedia painting right. run, so it's not, yeah. there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Um, so I'll pass this around closer so you guys can see it. But this was a painting we did in a class and many years ago now, I don't even remember when we started it. And I had put it away, I got busy with other things. Um, this is, uh, the, the background of this one was poured with, uh -huh. Paint. So you get lots of really unusual oh. color. Yeah. So you Colorful. mask it. Yeah, yeah, we masked all the white um, areas, oh, I and I did not at the time mask for snow falling. Oh. Oh. And so it was afterward that I'm like, you know, it'd be really nice if there was snow falling on oh, this. Okay. And so yeah. then I used you some splash. gouache. Okay. Yeah. With a a toothbrush. toothbrush yes. Yeah. And so you will see when you're looking at this, it, it does look a little opaque, um, uh -huh. a little yeah. flatter looking. It is. Yeah. Wow. No, so, so pretty, so colorful. Yeah, and I got done with them. Like I don't know if I like the color in the snow, but then as it's I've, as I've sat with it, it's you know I I like it, so it's fine. Um, and it's fun to try different thing, different techniques. So pouring is not necessarily something I do a lot of, but it is fun to do every now and then. So okay. Um, yeah, and those some of the, some of what happens with pouring is really interesting because you get really unusual colors happening, and then I paint over it. And um, pouring can be like that may have been only two layers, whereas I had a painting that was like seventeen layers. So you can just add and add and add. And, um, okay, so for this, I have. Um, now enough color. I like the color that's going on down here. I am going to add some um, kind of purpley color down in um, the water. So I've got my ultramarine blue and my warm red, the pearl scarlet, and I want I want some more marks and. Um, talking to a few of you, if you look at the water and you're feeling like it's not separating from the snow, look at your values, see if there's something else you can do, and also those horizontal marks that I'm putting in right now for some of the reflection, that can help make your water feel like it's sitting flat. If you don't have that in there, sometimes you, know, you can't quite tell. Um, so I'm putting that in and then back here I want a little bit. Um, and I'm going to come over here. This will actually need to go darker uh, in here, but I'm going to put that in. And right now I'm painting on dry paper. If I decide any of these marks are a little um, too strong or I want to soften an edge here and there, I can come back and put um, some water near. So are you using much water, Lorraine? No. 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 Just There's slightly? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I. I like some of the yellow that I got oh, right yeah. in there, so I don't yeah. want to get rid of all of that. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go, let's see, I want this darker for sure. And actually it needs to go a lot darker there. Um, so I think I'm going to dry that. At first I was going to say I'm going to just keep going with my shadows, but I don't necessarily want my shadows to blur into what I just did. So I'll dry this right quick. And then the um, edge, I was just noticing where my edge is. I'm using a small flat brush. Where my edge of the snow is, I put some color in there that kind of made this edge uh, rough. 
And so I'm just going to go clean it up. Before I would add any color to the snow there, I want to make sure that my line here um, looks like the snow is kind of soft and hilly looking. So I just clean that up. So the color that I'm going to use for the water is the indigo and the warm red, not the water, the reflection of the trees in the water. And at that back edge, there's just a little bit of a lighter area and then it goes dark. So I am going to put a little bit of water right in here and it's on where my reflection is going to be, but because I've placed the water there, now I can have that part be a little whiter, or whiter, lighter, <laughs> whiter and lighter, okay. And as I'm coming down, I'm going to get more of the indigo in that mix. And there's, it, it, sometimes it's those little things, um, if, if that wasn't there and you just had it be dark the whole way down, most people aren't going to go, oh, that's wrong. Because it's more just that, um, to me, it's interesting to have that little bit of mm -hmm. uh, color value change, not color change. Okay, so I have that one, and then kind of in the water right in here, there's... And that's still the scarlet? Yeah, it's the scarlet and the indigo. Okay. And I put a little water on sort of horizontally, and it grabbed it as I was doing that, and it helped me create that reflection. Um, let me see if I can do that again, because mm -hmm. I didn't point it out. Let's see. Okay, I'll do that over on this side. So if I take, and if you have even just a tiny touch of color on your brush, sometimes that can help you see where you're putting the water. As long as you're going to go darker, it won't affect anything. So I'll just kind of, I don't know if this is wet enough this time. We shall see. It may be dry by the time I get back. Okay, nope, it's grabbing it. So because I have the water there, now I have soft and hard edges depending on where I put my brush and it creates, it helps me create that reflection um, without me having to be too specific about where I'm placing the color. And then this is more in shadow right there and there's a little bit of color in here and I want to go darker under the snow and then I'm going to use some water right here to blur a little bit of those edges because I want them to not be as in focus right in that corner or not corner but that part of the snow um, alright so under the snow back here there's a definite darker area and then it Kind of. I'm going to grab a little bit of the ultramarine and parole because that shadow that's right there actually kind of blurs into um, sort of, well, my purpley color is not real purple right now. And I want to darken those just a touch. So even just layering in the water itself can give you more interest. So. Part of it is just as you're viewing something, you just keep looking and, and you see more. And I, I think I did a, um, in my newsletter, I did a uh, little watercolor tidbit about what um, I feel like is the important for my watercolors or how, you know, what do I, I don't remember what I titled it. But basically for me, it's one of the biggest things is um, looking and uh, really paying attention to what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. So taking the time to observe. Observation. Uh, there you go. <laughs> that word. <laughs> Alright. So even though I don't have the snow in or the shadow here, in the water there is a really strong shadow right in that area and there's a, a shadow that kind of hits right in here and so all of this part is on dry. You could, again, if you put that in and decide, oh, I want um, a softer edge here or there, you can come in while it's still 
slightly damp as long as your brush is just a little wet and you can soften an edge to um, change it. And then I need to do the other trees and I will let you guys go paint. Okay, so right here, yeah, there's actually a little warmer at the bottom. That's okay. All right. And um, in general, I am not trying to do the shadow exactly as there, but it's more to give the feeling that there's movement in the water. And so I'm just looking at that. And I'm going to use a little clear water. Well, it's not clear. It's got some color in it, which actually is just the color about I wanted. So. Okay, and then the other tree, um, it does also have a lighter bottom section right in here. Um, it actually almost looks purpley. I'm not sure if that's the snow I'm seeing or what it's reflecting down in there, but put that in a little lighter and then go in with the dark. And, okay, so this little tree right here is actually a tree I haven't put in yet, so that may not make sense. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, where is that tree? <laughs> okay, um, and then under, so at, right now this is um, pretty good, but I still need some more uh, um, shadow in here and in through here. This is not dark enough, even though I want that yellow to stay. We'll see if I can get it to stay. So I'm putting water in because I want to keep this um, soft edged. And I'm coming, oh I don't want to use that color. I'm going to use my purple because I want to make it look like it's the snow reflecting. So I'm using the ultramarine and um, parole, thank you, that one. <laughs> The Parole Scarlet. All right. And because I'm kind of not doing exactly as what's on the image, I am just trying to darken some of those areas earlier that I had that were kind of in that purple-ish range and leaving some of the um, color reflecting. This shadow right here, if I can push it a little darker, would be a pretty important one. Okay. Now there are times where if you are working with an image and you're painting along and you're painting and you get something that happens that's a happy little accident and it's just like, oh, I just love that part of the painting, but um, it's not really where your center of interest should be and it's um, maybe pulling attention away from your center of interest, that's where you might have to lose it and um, not <coughs> whatever that thing is, um, whether it's color or a particular pattern or texture or something. Um, but I feel like this is not taking away from um, this area. So, okay, let me see. Um, so there is my brush. Come on, it's like it fell asleep. Um, <laughs> There's a darker shadow under here, and some of that stuff I wouldn't necessarily put in right now, but it's okay, it's a little softer edged. There's still some shadowing up in here where the snow is, um, and that's darker there too. Okay, uh, because it's 3.30, I think I'm going to stop and uh, let you guys go paint some more, and then uh, basically I would still have to put color on the snow over here, and then look at my values again.
Thank mm-hmm. you.